in which they partially stated that the county will encourage and support state and federal funding applications for farm worker housing and supporting infrastructure. Um, action 2.6, um, not much has happened with that. That's, we could be doing something with it. Also, Action 2.6 um, says that we're, the county is going to be meeting with farm worker housing developers on an ongoing basis. Um, that's not happening to try to encourage getting some of this housing built. Two um, very uh, particular action items that deal squarely on farm worker housing aren't mentioned by planning staff. Um, one is action 6.7, which was supposed to be implemented in 2004 and 2005. And I would say that this action item, 6.7, excuse me, involves the amending of many ordinances within our county to help encourage, make it easier for farm worker housing to get developed, um, reduce constraints. That item alone, if we could get that implemented as soon as possible, would go a long way to helping our either employers or other ho housing developers who are interested in doing farm worker housing. Another action item that the planning team didn't mention is action 6.12, which also is supposed to be ongoing, and I will find it for you in a second. 6. Excuse me, 6.12 Farm Employee Labor Housing, work with the agricultural community and housing providers to facilitate year-round and seasonal agricultural worker housing and provide education about the county's farm employee labor housing regulations. One site has been identified by the planning team, one site in four years that could be useful uh, for farm worker housing, and that's it. So I would posit that this is a great thing that we've accomplished, but let's accomplish the other things that are, that are directly focused on farm worker housing, that are in our housing element now. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to correct what could be perceived as um, uh, success of implementing action 4.2, which is the 50 acre rezone. Um, staff report says that that's been completed, and I think that we all know it has not been completed. About 11 acres have been rezoned that are adequate for densities that action 4.2 requires, have the infrastructure. The remaining, f f help me with my math here, 39, 39 acres uh, have not been rezoned or completed or even uh, in, in any process that's going to be before you at any time. So I just want to make it clear that that action item 4.2 has not been uh, completed at all. But in, the, in what has been rezoned, and I just wanted to remind you from when you did that, that, that rezone for those um, acres, that the county owns the Hopland Yard. That's in Hopland. There's a huge need and huge demand for farm worker housing in Hopland. So I would urge the board to consider pushing forward on getting um, that site uh, in the works for a possible development for farm worker housing. And thank you for your efforts and thank you for the planning team for their efforts. I know it's a big job and I hate to always be beating on it, but I really just want to keep you guys in line and moving forward um, for getting our housing and our affordable housing needs met. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. And for the record, I've allowed you uh, twice the time. So. Thank you very much. Okay. Any Next questions? Next speaker, please. Please try and keep your comments three minutes. Another more time, San Santiago Cimentel. And uh, Supervisor Pinches, I agree with you one million percent. I'm. I appreciate funds that are directed for direct services. I'm a direct services kind of person, and sometimes uh, surveys drive us nuts as well. Um, we participated, as Mr. Acosta participated in this survey because we felt that it was going to be very important that we access as many potential uh, uh, participants uh, in this survey, and we we felt that through our agency, we were going to be able to, to, to accomplish that more so than, uh, than other, other types of approaches. And uh, I could speak anecdotally to uh, several conditions that took place where we went on site and there was a lot of hesitation on the part of the, the, the workers to come forward and actually participate in the survey, rightfully so. There's always that fear factor. 
but then once one or two of their colleagues uh, came forward and uh, kind of struck up a conversation and, and engaged in the, um, the survey itself, then the rest of the, uh, several of, the, of other uh, uh, farm w laborers in that uh, on those ranches uh, came forward also. So I think there's a lot of potential there. We did discover something. We discovered that there are, in fact, whether it's the needs for one. Now, one, one set of housing in one particular region or housing all throughout the, uh, the entire county. But uh, the realization is that I think we all believe is the case, and that is that uh, these services, both transportation and housing, are a critical need for uh, farm workers in our community. Thank you very much. Additional members of the public wishing to speak to this item? Okay. Um, back to the board, Supervisor Colfax. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, before we wrap up this session that uh, we have an opportunity to acknowledge the presence of uh, Jerry Cox here just standing up and uh, proceeding across the room. Uh, Jerry has just submitted his resignation from the Community Development Corporation, which he has been a major advocate for farm worker housing uh, and it's been a long hard time a, a job and uh, his involvement with the Anderson Valley Housing uh, Association as well and I, I just want to thank Jerry here and I think we all owe him uh, a, uh, a great deal of appreciation for the work you've done Jerry thank you for doing it I'm sorry you're going off it'll be impossible to find somebody to replace you thank you for pointing that out supervisor Mr. Mitchell Thank you. I was just going to ask if Allison would comment on the Hopland uh, property. Um, yes, I can do that. We have uh, been in discussion and getting background on the Hopland Road Yard with the intention of when that comes before you for discussion to be able to um, give some background and the possible connection with uh, the uh, farm worker housing discussions that have taken place. And we have been uh, in discussion with um, at least one uh, developer of farm, working ho farm worker housing. So there are a number of things that are going on, and uh, but they're not ready for uh, prime time quite yet. We are trying to gather the background so that when we are able to bring it forward to you, we've got all the background that you need. Okay. Supervisor Pinchett. Just to tag on to that, uh, the Laytonville project, the mobile home park, the yeah. actual plans will be submitted this month. So it's yeah. I feel good. That's, that's I, about as quick as action. Yeah, as I, I would get. say that that uh, you know when the almost 50 acre rezoned came before the board, all of that follow up is now occurring and contacting the owners, actually making the the changes in the uh, I'll call it the paperwork. I'm sure there's some more official term because now it's zoned by right. I would also remind you that some of the 50 acre rezone or the proposed is actually linked with the Ukiah Valley area plan and was intended to come forward as part of that. And so as, as time, time frames uh, evolve, we need, we need to go back and look at the time frame for completing that because we did not bring forward any of the rezones that were within the Ukiah Valley area plan area. So they are still there and need to be followed up on. So there are a number of things. The, um, what was listed in the staff report were action items specifically relating to farm worker housing. The planning team is aware of all of the elements in, in the uh, housing element and uh, following through on them, trying to follow some kind of order. So, you know, once we get the survey completed and finalized, then, you know, we will work on uh, the, the next steps after that. Okay. Additional? Supervisor? Yeah, budget. just, oh, this is more of a comment for Lisa. You know, you have to realize, too, we're, we're in a time right now with not just low-income housing, but housing and the development of all types has basically come to a standstill. So we're trying to do everything we can to jumpstart that, but uh, we kind of entered 